Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining our scientific webinar today on thiazine formation, the elucidation of a thiol maleamide side reaction, which will be given by my colleague, Dr. Matteo Villan. I'm your host, Lael Chung. Let's start by learning a little bit about Bachem. Bachem is a leading innovation driven contract development and manufacturing organization that specializes in the development and manufacture of peptides and oligonucleotides. Our mission is to offer the best solutions for today and develop innovation for tomorrow. We are committed to research and science. Our company is publicly listed on the SIX Swiss Stock Exchange. For more information, please visit our website at www.bachem.com. It's my pleasure to introduce today's speaker, Dr. Matteo Villain. Matteo joined Bachem Americas in 2004 as Director of Research. During his career at Bachem, Matteo has also served as VP of R&D, responsible for process development, and VP of Manufacturing, responsible for production of commercial APIs. In his current role, Matteo helps our clients identify key activities to ensure to ensure a successful regulatory filing. Matteo earned his PhD in chemistry and pharmaceutical technology from the University of Milan's School of Pharmacy. As for myself, I'm a business development manager based in Boston. I help clients initiate GMP projects at Bachem. My focus area is in peptide new chemical entities, otherwise known as peptide NCEs. Now it is time for our poll question. Are you currently using the thiol maleamide reaction for covalent modification of peptides and proteins? Please choose from the three answers shown on your screen. A, yes, routinely. B, no, but planning to. Or C, no experience, but maybe in the future. OK, it looks like we have actually a really good variety of uh, responses here. So as you can see on your screen, there are varying levels of experience with the thiol maleamide Thiol maleamid reaction. Uh, fun fact, Bachem recently celebrated its 50th anniversary. Over the past five decades, we have greatly expanded the breadth and depth of our experiences and expertise in synthetic and analytical chemistry. We offer a comprehensive range of products and services for basic research, clinical development, and commercial applications. With these three focus areas, we support customers from pharmaceutical and biotechnology companies globally. Bachem is headquartered in Switzerland, but we operate internationally. Our GMP manufacturing sites are located in Switzerland and Southern California. Our UK site specializes in research grade as well as diagnostic grade peptides. And we have a business office in Japan to serve the East Asian Pacific market. Innovation is the motor of our business, and we are proud to present an important in-house study in peptide chemistry on a reaction that I had used quite a lot uh, during my time in lab, the thiomaleamid reaction. And we hope that this further contributes to the services that we offer to our customers. And with that, um, some housekeeping rules. Please write to us at any time using the Q&A function. At the end of this presentation, we will have time to answer some questions. And with that, I yield the floor to my colleague, Matteo Villan. Thank you, Leo. Um, let's start the presentation. The, give me a second, I have to reach control. So, sorry, control a little bit flicker. Um, we're going to talk about today about malamide and cysteine conjugation. Uh, malamide are reagents you use very often to modify the property of peptide and protein. Uh, the chemospecific, chemospecific conjugation between a malamide and a, pro and a protein happen uh, at, the, at the position of cysteine normally. Uh, the reason why malamide are so, um, um, so popular in the industry is that there is a very large portfolio of off-the-shelf reagents. 
that are available on the market. And the use of a system allowed to very uh, selectively uh, position the derivatization reagent that you want to use to modify your biomolecule. Uh, the reaction is very, very fast, but on the other hand, um, malamide, the, the succinamide thioether, which are the product of the reaction of malamide with the cysteine, are prone to some side reaction. The side reaction include hydrolysis of the malamide ring and the retromicral addition that allow exchange of the thiols. And through the investigation that we conducted uh, in, the last few, in the last years, we were able to identify an additional side reaction that happen when an N-terminal cysteine is used for the conjugation to a malamide. Now, the uh, malamide example of uh, the use of a malamide uh, reagent for the conjugation to a protein, are, are, there are various examples in the commercial field and in, in other fields in, in the research field. A uh, classical example is the use of malamide to generate antibody drug conjugate with some very uh, important or critical um, product on the market for cancer therapy. Additionally, um, the, um, malamide, the use of malamide dye allowed to introduce fluorescent uh, entities in peptide and protein for diagnostic application. Very exciting. Uh, evolution of this, of the concept of the pegylation is the use of malamide PEG to modify uh, bio, biopolymer, both protein and peptide, uh, allowing to produce a life extension in the in vivo, in vivo activity of peptide. And finally, more recently, the use of malamide um, chelator allow to introduce this chelator on a peptide or a protein to generate radiotherapy or to use them for imaging. Now, over the first year, we have uh, identified an unexpected side reaction that happened during conjugation between a malamido linker and an terminal pept and, and, and a, a peptide containing an N-terminal system. So we are always very curious about the chemistry of peptide and we like to understand what we are dealing in with when we deal with um, active pharmaceutical ingredients because your objective is to identify and characterize the impurities. So we wanted to identify the parameter that affect this side reaction. We want to elucidate the structure of this side reaction and propose a possible mechanism. To do this, we decided to use a model peptide with a very simple sequence cysteine, uh, modify a different um, amino acid in the second position of this peptide and phenylalanine. Um, we wanted, first of all, to establish if there is a dependence between the pH of the side reaction. We wanted to establish if uh, the, the, the identity of the amino acid in the second position in the peptide is an effect on the side reaction. And finally, we wanted to test if the side reaction was general, uh, meaning he will happen with different type of man, um, malamide linkers. So the first part of this investigation was uh, to induce the side reaction and characterize the resulting product and structure. To do that, we started with the most simple peptide in our series, which was the cysteine, glycine, phenylalanine, and to react with the um, model malamido agent, we chose malamido propionic acid. So when you incubate uh, malamido propionic acid and a peptide with a free cysteine, pH 7.3, you generate a succinimide yield thioether. And I want you to focus for a second to the fact that this uh, thioether generate a new chiral center in the five member ring of the succinimide yield reagent, uh, which generate two, um, two products, the R and the S product of this chiral center. So if we look at the chromatogram at the bottom of the slide, you will notice that um, the 
black um, the black trace down here indicated that our reaction between the peptide and the mercatopropionic acid was very rapid at pH 7.3. And in approximately minutes, we have generated the two expect thioether peaks with the Kairos center. But as we let the reaction go over, over a period of 24 hours, we observed the generation of a new peak, which uh, we, by mass spec, we identify as a product with the same mass as the starting product. And after 24 hours, the conversion in this new product was almost completed. So at this point, we isolated this product uh, to conduct NMR study and to conduct MSMS fragmentation study. For the NMR study, we collaborated with Professor Oli Zerbe at the University of Zurich. And Professor Zerbe was able to uh, elucidate uh, all the NMR peaks for both the carbon and the proton of our structure. And then with the type of experiment called heteronuclear multiple band correlation, uh, this experiment allowed to correlate uh, proton and carbon-14 signals. There are two, three, or in a conjugated system, four bound separated. Now, the, uh, the signal that you see here is the correlation between the proton in position eight, it, sorry, the carbon in position 18 and proton in position now. So the only possible explanation for this correlation is that this proton and this carbon are two or three bond away. Uh, the same correlation will not be possible in the case of the uh, starting thioether isomer. Additionally, there were other uh, signals that, that allow us to characterize the full structure of this six-member ring. When we uh, executed a MSMS experiment uh, of our purified product, we also detect a fragmentation pattern consistent with the thiazine. Specifically, we observed the fragmentation between the uh, Amide, the fragmentation of the amide bond between the now modified malimidopropionic acid and this carbonyl. This fragmentation can only take place when you have the thiazine structure. It's not possible when you have the initial uh, thioether structure. So what we had to propose a mechanism and based on the structure of the uh, succinimide thioether, what we, we assume is happening is that the uh, nitrogen, uh, the, N-terminal amine, uh, the N-terminal amine of the peptide is attacking the carbonyl in the succinimide thioether structure and forming a five-member ring and this five member ring go through a rearrangement. So we form a, a bicyclic intermediate structure and we go through a rearrangement with the opening of the initial malimido ring and the formation of our thiazine uh, side reaction product. Now, once we have correlated, we have identified the structure for the degradants in the more uh, in the simple uh, glycine model peptide. We continue the study with the objective of, first of all, establish if there is a correlation between the pH and the rate of the rearrangement of the um, bringing to the thiazine structure. And then we also were curious to understand if the amino acid in the second position has an impact on the rate of the rearrangement. To do that, first, we started with analyze our two simple products, the malimidopropionic acid and the glycine peptide at different pH for a period of 24 hours. And what we were able to observe is that at pH 5.0, here in black, after 24 hours, there is no rearrangement that detectable. 
while at pH 7.3, close to the physiological pH, you have approximately 90% of rearrangement. And at pH 8.4, we have the full rearrangement and we cannot detect anymore or, or only in traces the starting uh, succinomedial thioethyl structure. We then went back to our panel of peptides that we have produced, five of them, and we observed the generation of the, um, of the thyroid structure and the rearrangement over time at pH 5.0. And as for the glycine at pH 5.0, the rearrangement is extremely useful. To detect a significant amount of the, um, of the rearrange structure, we have to let the reaction go for approximately 14 days. And after 14 days at pH 5.0, we have a range of conversion to the thiazine between 0.3% and 1%. Uh, all the products with the different uh, side chain in position two converted to the thiazine, but with different rates. A clear um, calculation of the kinetic of conversion can be, could be easily de um, determined at pH 7.3. At pH 7.3, we were able to follow the reaction for a period of approximately two hours, and we were able to determine the rate of conversion at different time points in these two hours. Um, sorry, the amount of conversion. And with this amount of conversion, we were able to establish a kinetic of conversion at different pHs. As, as you can see, all the product that we tested were converting to the thiazine. And the percentage of conversion was between uh, eight, nine percent for the cysteine lysine structure and three percent for the cysteine glutamic acid structure, but approximately the rate was between 3% and 8% and 9% in a period of one hour. But more importantly, we were able to establish an exact kinetic by analyzing the regression curve of the, these five points. When we repeated the same set of experiment at pH 8.4 per two hours, again, we were able to correlate very clearly uh, with, to observe an increase in the conversion. And at pH 8.4 in one hour, we have approximately 18% of conversion for the more simple structure with the glycine in the second position and approximately 7% with a leucine in the middle position. And if we look at the, ray, um, at the ratio between the rate at pH 8.5 and the rate at pH 7.3, we see that the rate is approximately three times faster at pH 8.5. Now, what the possible critical difference in the pH that cause such a dramatic shift of rate of conversion at between pH 7 and pH 8. When you look at a peptide with an N-terminal cysteine, you obviously have the amino group, the N-terminal amino group in the peptide, which exists both in a protonated state and in a deprotonated state, depending on the pKa of that amino group. And for the side reaction to happen, you have to have your amino group uh, in a deprotonated state, which happen at the pH, which is above the pKa of that N terminus. So different uh, product may have slightly different um, pKa for that N terminal amino group. So we are looking at a rationale for the change in, uh, um, in the kinetic of um, the, site, the, the conversion that is correlated to the pKa of the end terminal of your product. So we have done this study looking at a very simple model with, of malimido, which is the malimido propionic acid. We wanted to understand if, if this was a general property of any malimido linkers that you can uh, put on the, on the end terminal of a peptide, or it was limited to that model. 
that we have chosen to start the study. So we introduced two other reagents besides the malimidopropionic acid. Uh, this MHH product, which has a long alkyl chain between the malimido ring and a carbonyl, which is six carbon away from the malimido group. So a longer alkyl chain. And the other reason we wanted to study this product is because there are um, in the literature, there, there are reports that claim that this structure is more stable of a propionic acid type of structure. And we also wanted to study what happened when we have a different type of molecule. Specifically, we wanted to explore what happened with the PEG, the polydispersed PEG. So for, for this reason, we chose this PEG uh, 10K which has the same linker between the malimido uh, uh, ring and this carbonyl, but the only difference is in the case of MPA, you have a carboxylic group at, the, um, at this end of the molecule, and for the PEG, you have an amide. So we will expect some change in, uh, electro, uh, in electronic property. We also wanted to choose a molecule that has quite a large polydispersity to make our uh, analytical uh, challenge a little bit higher and see if we were still able to detect the tyrosine. So for the MHH product, uh, we still were able to see the product of conjugation very early on at time zero showing um, that the reagent is equally reactive as the malimidopropionic acid. We conduct all this study at the age 73. And in a period of 24 hours, we observe a conversion of about approximately 50%. This was with the glycine position. We went, go ahead and study the conjugation between MHH and our series of model peptide. And again, in a period of two hours, we are able to generate a, the kinetic curve that allow to us to establish what is the rate of conversion. And we saw that uh, in about one hour, we have between 1% and 2% of the conversion. Now the rate of conversion compared to the initial MPA model was about three times lower than mercatopropionic acid, supporting the fact that this linker is more stable compared to the uh, mercatopropionic acid linkers. Then we went ahead and looked into the conjugation of uh, the peptide with the PEG 10K. And what we can see here is that a pH 7.7, .7, after approximately, I think it's 24 hour, we were able to generate the diazine structure. Now we show you later proof, but we can also show that compared to our model peptide, a, introducing the large polydispersed peg render the analytical part much more difficult. In the case of the peptide with a lysine in the middle position, we were able to capture an intermediate state where we were able to see both the initial thioether product form at, at, at the beginning of the conjugation and the thiazine. And after a period of 38 hours, we were able to observe the full conversion to the thiazine. Now, if you look at this chromatogram, you think, well, how do you really know what's going on there? They look very broad peak, maybe not. It's not clear you have other parameters. Well, this is where our LCMS experiment beca became critical to understand the form of the N terminus of this peptide. Because when we pass the, when we submitted this sample for MSMS fragmentation, we were able to identify the mass corresponding to the conversion to a tyrosine for both the glycine peptide and the lysine peptide. 
And obviously we saw the, as I show you at the beginning, these 406 masks corresponding to the fragmentation between these, uh, uh, the, this, in this amide bond. So in summary, the rearrangement from thioether to thiazine is general for malamide conjugated terminal cystein peptide, a physiologic at pH and at room temperature. Uh, all the experiments that I show you were conducted at room temperature. There are differences in rate of the rearrangement between different side chain, but these differences are minimal and the, the rate of conversion is in the same order of magnitude, making this a very general side reaction. Over 45% conversion to the thiazine is observed for all of the uh, peptide we have studied for the MPA conjugation after 24 hour and a pH 7.3. And finally, the thiazine rearrangements occurs for various unsubstituted malamide, the MPA, the MHH, and the PEG10K. And the MHH conjugate Low, um, uh, is lower to rearrange. The rearrangement is accelerated at higher pH with 7.3 be, being faster than 5.0 and 8.4 faster than 7.3, than, um, 7 but is also uh, substantially suppressed at lower pH, around pH 5 and lower. And finally, I think I show you that UPLC MSMS or MSMS is a rapid, general, and reliable method for the detection of the thiazine isomer and can be applied for many model peptides. So, and many peptides. In conclusion, uh, how can you avoid this side reaction? Well, one of the logical uh, solution is not having an N-terminal system with a free amino group uh, in your um, biopolymer that you want to submit to, for conjugation. This will totally eliminate the group. And one way to do that is acetylating the N-terminus uh, by eliminating the free amine and introducing an amide. And this will eliminate this uh, reaction completely. We think that it's very important that people is aware and understand this side reaction in peptide chemistry especially if you are in the field of API production, or if you're thinking about developing a peptide as an active pharmaceutical ingredient, not only for the ability of your um, company to produce the material, but for the impact that this side reaction has during formulation and in vivo. And we hope that by conducting this study, uh, we were able to provide our customer and the peptide at large an important insight that will help you save in developmental resources. It's very easy to add an acetyl group to a peptide to avoid this cell reaction if you have a cysteine at the end terminus. Uh, it's much more complex and more expensive to rethink about your developmental pro project at a later stage because you encounter this side reaction and you have to backpedal and modify the structure at a later stage. Thank you for your attention and back to Leo. Thank you again, Matteo, for the very enlightening presentation. Um, we're going to, as we head on to the Q&A session, uh, we're going to have another poll question. So to the audience, have you come across the formation of the thiazine impurity problem in your projects? Please select from the choices shown on your screen. Yes, no, but have heard about the problem before, or no, first time hearing about this. Okay, so actually the majority of you have, have not heard about this rearrangement before. Uh, and again, yes, we're glad that we've, um, that we've had the opportunity to present on our findings. And with that, let us head over to the Q&A session. So Mateo, are you ready? Sure, should Great. be. <laughs> All right, for question and answers. Our first question is about the possibility of forming the thiazine structure in vivo. 
Can you comment on that, Matteo? Would you expect this uh, thiazine arrange rearrangement to occur in vivo in, let's say, serum when people are doing in vivo experiments or cell-based experiments using biological buffers? Assuming that your, uh, your uh, CMO or, or the company you're using is able to isolate the product as a succinamidyl thioether without the rearrangement, I think that as the product gets injected in, uh, in vivo, because of the pH in the body fluid, which is about 7.2, I think this side reaction will happen and you will observe the conversion of the product in vivo. So I think it's possible that you start with a product that is um, what you initially thought you would produce and as you inject it, this will convert to the tyrosine. And I think it, it's not that difficult to do some uh, serum stability study and detect if you have the, the right analytical tool, the formation in serum of this uh, side product. Okay. Our next question, Matteo, is with regards to synthetic chemistry conditions. So the, the audience member is asking, if you are dealing with a very hydrophobic peptide, and a very hydrophobic modifier. So you have to carry out the thiol maleamide reaction in an organic solution. Would you also expect that to occur or does this require aqueous, uh, aqueous mediator? Um, I have to think about this. I will suspect that because this reaction do not include water in the our proposed mechanism, if your uh, amino group is deprotonated in the organic phase, meaning uh, if you have any type of base there, same, I don't know, 3-ethylamine or diesel ethylamine, the side reaction will take place regardless. Okay. The next question, Matteo, is about um, confirmation. So these were all done on linear peptides. Would cyclic peptides that have similar motif uh, also undergo this rearrangement? Well, it depends, uh, first, what you mean with cyclic peptide. So a head-to-tail peptide with the cysteine in the cyclic and the cysteine is reduced, they will not go through uh, this side reaction because they are comparable to any um, intermediate system position where the side reaction doesn't take place. Mm -hmm. If we are talking about a peptide where you have cyclization through the formation of disulfur bridges and you're able to form these disulfur bridges and then somehow generate the N terminal system with a free amine. Uh, I assume the reaction will take place if you are able to maintain the disulfur bridges. If at that point, when you deprotect whatever way you use to keep that tile protected in the N terminal system, I would suspect that you will start having um, scrambling of the sequence. That would be my suspicion. But mm -hmm. if you can keep it reduced and um, in a reduced state and with the free amine, I think you will still have the side reaction. Cyclic okay. means different thing for different people. Yeah, I, I think they were talking about like a staple peptide that also had a cysteine for other other modification. Great. Uh, then our I next think question. No difference. Yeah. Okay. Our next question is: Will this side reaction be possible during um, storage? So I guess in solution or via pre preparatory column. Will this happen on column during prep HPLC? So it all depends on the pH of your PrEP HPLC. PrEP HPLC can be conducted with different um, buffer modifier. I think if you are doing this with TFA, uh, most likely the product will be uh, generated without the side reaction. Uh, after, so, but if you have to use a neutral or basic buffer to purify your conjugated product, then I think the cell reaction will take uh, either on the column or when you collect your fractions outside the column. Um, we have some data that indicate 
that you even with a slightly acidic pH around pH four, if you go through a lyophilization step, we observe the formation of the side reaction. That's actually how it was initially detected okay. as a process during lyophilization. Mm -hmm. And in that case, the pH was around four. So I think uh, this will happen during the life isolation step of your product. Uh, we don't have any data about stability once you form the product, uh, the stability of the product. You have to remember that um, most of the active pharmaceutical ingredient that you generate are not TFA salt. So most mm -hmm. of your research work is going to be done with TFA salt. The pH is very acidic. Most likely you're not able to see this. And if you don't follow, follow what happened to your product when you uh, prepare it from the injection in the animals, you will not know that this had happened. But when you go into the active pharmaceutical world, you very rarely product RTFA salt. So you have to change the salt. And this brings in another complexity because your pH normally goes up during that change of salt. Okay. Um, an interesting question here about unusual amino acids. If the N-terminus contains a beta cysteine, is this side reaction expected? I don't know. I'm sorry, but um, I have to, to draw the structure. I think you still have some possibility, but I think with the beta cysteine, um, you lose the advantage of the six member ring. Uh, okay. If I visualize it, that would be maybe a seven member ring. So the stability might be slightly different. It's okay. It has to be tested. Okay, so you recommend uh, folks brush up on their Baldwin's rules. <laughs> okay. All right, and two more questions so far. Um, one, do you think this rearrangement could occur in a peptide with, cis with the cysteine containing the succinamid? adjacent to a free lysine or ornithine? It, does that go back to the, um, the, the how large the ring is? No, I think if it's in, so if the peptide is at, see if the cysteine is at the end terminus, we think that the nature of the amino acid after the cysteine going N to C, um, has some impact, but um, is not able to, there are no amino acid will suppress the, the rearrangement. If you look at the list of amino acid, or if you read your, our articles, um, you will notice that we selected positively charged amino acid, negatively charged amino acid, an hydrophilic amino acid like serine or an hydrophobic amino acid. And for all of them, we observe the side reaction. So um, ornithine should get you the same, uh, the same rearrangement, as long as the cysteine is a free cysteine, meaning exists as a free amine at the end terminus of the peptide. Okay. And our last question is, is sort of a make lemonade from lemons question. If assuming that this rearrangement is irreversible, is there any way to drive this to completion? similar to what has been done with um, antibody malayamid reactions to produce a homogenous product? Yes, I think that's a possibility. As we show, uh, after 24 hour, the, for one of the model peptide, uh, I think the first cysteine glycine, the mm -hmm. reaction proceeds to completion. Okay. We did not serve, you, you obtain a more stable product. And so the reverse reaction, which is the, at the equilibrium will be strongly disfavored because now you have to break a six member ring. Okay. Yeah, I think they're alluding to this being a thermodynamic sink. So I've heard from other, uh, from the biologics folks that uh, who use melamid, uh, some, in some cases they ended up hydrolyzing, partially hydrolyzing the melamid so that you get the uh, relaxed, relaxed form. Yes, I've read the same thing. Um, now in an antibody, probably you hydrolyze and you generate two products in the antibody. Now you have already a chiral center, a second chiral, a chiral center for plus two possible hydrolysis of the succinamido 
ring uh, you generate now for product. In the field of peptide, you're gonna see for product most mm -hmm. likely if, you're a, if your analytics are good. And I think one of the challenge will be to support uh, to the authority the fact that these four products, they all have the same activities, the same biology. You might be asked to isolate each of them and test their activity, if the, the activity will be the same for each of them, and then guarantee that you will always generate the same four product, uh, mm -hmm. the same ratio if they have slightly different biological activity. So, the challenge in the peptide thing is a little bit higher in terms of analytic of what you will have for a biologic. Uh, for a biologic, you use your biological readout, uh, bioassay to prove that you've done it. In peptide, you have to use analytics and that gets a little bit more difficult. Okay, great. Well, um... All the questions have been answered. If the audience uh, comes up with additional questions, then um, we can actually answer them after the, the presentation. Can I make a comment? Um, yes, go ahead. With we you. publish an article associated to this, um, to this work, and this uh -huh. article is available on our website. If everybody wants to read uh, a more expanded story, please go to the backend website. Um, and you can, you're able to download straight the article. Thank you. Great, awesome. Yes, yeah, so as Matteo has alluded to, if you would like um, to access the, uh, the free article, which has been published, right, Matteo, open access, right, online? Yes, it's an open access. Right, in a peer review journal, uh, please go ahead and in send an inquiry to webinar at bachem.com. We can send you a link or a copy uh, since it was authored by Bachem. And if you have additional questions, please send them to, um, to webinar at bachem.com and we'll route them to Mateo. Again, we would like to thank you for your attendance and for future webinar announcements, please follow us on our different social media platforms as well as visit our website. And with that, I'd like to bid everyone a nice day. Bye everyone. Bye Mateo. It was a pleasure. Bye everyone.